Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick, or The Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, I'm bringing you guys my mid-round value picks. I already did the early round value picks from rounds 1 all the way to round 5, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about round 6 all the way until round 9, because I believe round 10 and on are the later round picks. So before we get into the video, I'd like to ask if you guys could please go down below and click that subscribe button. It's free, and I produce fantasy football content every single day to help you guys win your 2020 fantasy football championship, and like I said, it's free. It doesn't hurt you to click it and you get the videos every single day to help you guys win that championship that I know you all want. I would also like to ask you guys while you're down there could check out my Patreon down below. It has my draft guide with all the rankings and all the articles that you guys are going to want to read to help you even further dominate your 2020 fantasy football draft. So, but without further ado, let's get right into it. First, actually, though, I would like to read a review from the podcast, Apple Podcasts, so that people can, you know, if you want to leave a review, I'll read it for you. Brent, four, 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 let the five star review. It says hilarious and informative. I really appreciate this, by the way. First started listening to this podcast when introduced through the BDG community. Nick is absolutely hilarious, and I really enjoy how he approaches fantasy from an analytical stand or an analytical perspective. Most of all, Nick is out here grinding to produce content or quality fantasy football content each and every single day during COVID. He has been my most reliable source for fantasy football news as he seems to never take a break. Keep up the amazing work. I really do appreciate that. Brent and if you guys want to leave a review on there it's always down below in the description I really do appreciate it and it helps get my podcast out to more people so without rambling on let's get right into the video so thank you very much Brent again so round six I'll read off the ADP and then we'll talk about the main guy and then also there's going to be other guys that I want to talk about here that I actually think are great value as well at number 61 the start beginning of the sixth round we have David Montgomery followed by Deshaun Watson Raheem Mostert Terry McLaurin AJ Green Hunter Henry Debo Samuel Michael Gallup Josh Allen Jarvis Landry DeAndre Swift and Tyler Higby. The honorable mention for this round is going to be David Montgomery. Now, I don't didn't pick Dave Montgomery as the biggest value, as I feel like he's more of a safe kind of a pick here. I think he is really going to have a great season and finish above running back number 25, but there is a player in this round who I really think is an even better value than him, and typically by round six, I already have like three running backs, so I don't really try to assert and try to pick Dave Montgomery here, but obviously in the sixth round is amazing value for Dave Montgomery, so my real pick here is number 64, Terry McLaurin, wide receiver, number 27 off the board, Mr. Run TMC, Mr. F1 McLaurin, whatever the hell you want to call him. This guy's a goddamn beast. FFPC ADP 57.74. FFPC is high stakes fantasy football leagues. ADP is average draft position. He is obviously of the Washington team that has yet to be named. Six feet tall, 208 pounds. Out of Ohio State, was drafted last season, 24.9 years old. He has a 98th percentile 40 yard dash with a 4.35, 95th percentile speed score, 77th percentile burst score, 58th percentile agility score, and 76th percentile catch radius. Now, if you guys have watched my channel for a while, you would have known this was the pick from a mile away. I fucking love Terry McLaurin. I would go to bat for him every single time someone wants to talk about him. I've made multiple videos talking about him. A wide receiver number 27 off the board, like I said, pick number 64. Last year, though, finished as wide receiver number 29 in 2019, playing in just 14 games. 13.7 PPR points per game, ranking 29th at the wide receiver position, 93 targets, 6.6 .6 per game, 34th at wide receiver, 58 receptions, 4.1 per game, 36th at wide receiver, 919 receiving yards. 65.6 per game, 27th at wide receiver, 8 red zone receptions, 18th at wide receiver, 7 total touchdowns, 13th at wide receiver, and 23% target share in that Washington Redskins offense, 22 at wide receiver. What that target share tells me is that he is a main piece in this offense. He is the alpha wide receiver in that offense. Now, Steven Sims is going to be there and probably will be the number two behind him, but that does not scare me at all. Terry McLaurin is really the alpha and the dominant wide receiver on this team. He faced great corners all year long because he was clearly the wide receiver one all season long and this is with multiple quarterbacks playing last season last year he played with Dwayne Haskins at quarterback Colt McCoy even at a point started at the quarterback position so the Redskins team last season was not looking super hot but this season I think they're going to look to improve and be a much better team and obviously Terry McLaurin would get a boost up from them just being much better. So if we look at some more interesting Terry McLaurin stats, we can see that he had a 68.4% contested catch rate, number one in the NFL. This guy is a fucking beast. He'll absolutely moss you when the ball is coming his way. He just has sticky hands. A 79.6% catchable target rate, ranking 40th at wide receiver, which is important to note because that deals with the quarterback play. The quarterback was not throwing the ball necessarily correctly his way, and he still did very good on a per-game basis, but I do think that is going to obviously ramp up, up, and 
up, and I could see Terry McLaurin really finishing as a top 12 wide receiver. Though, though, even if the quarterback play wasn't too good, 115.9% quarterback ranking when targeted 10th in the NFL since he was being able to catch really anything, even if the ball wasn't really looking too good thrown his way. He was still catching at 9.9 yards per target, ranking 12th at wide receiver and 15.8 yards per reception, 14th at wide receiver, which is very good because he's a deeper down the field kind of a threat, but he can also make moves. Just pretty much get Terry McLaurin the ball, and the Washington team is going to be rolling. Dwayne Haskins has been working very hard in the offseason to get better, which to me really makes no sense because obviously he wants to work to get better, but him and Terry McLaurin just didn't have a good connection last year. But spoiler alert, these motherfuckers went to college together, and for some reason, some, some reason Dwayne Haskins just somehow forgot how to throw the ball to the best wide receiver on the Washington team even though they were at Ohio State together, which just doesn't make any sense. So the second round, not the second round, round seven we're going to be talking about, but the second round of the video here is the seventh round. Starting off, the seventh round is with Evan Ingram, Easy e at pick 73. 74, we got Cam Akers, followed by Kareem Hunt, Matty, Ice in the Veins, Hollywood Brown, Darius Geis, Tyler Boyd, Drew Brees, Jared Cook, Sony Michelle, Damian Williams, Aaron Rodgers. There are a couple of picks here that I actually like in this round. I really like Cam Akers as a high upside pick, potentially could be the LA Rams workhorse if the all things go his way but with preseason games being limited now it seems like they may play no preseason games that's obviously going to hurt Cam Akers Kareem Hunt obviously as a very he's, a, he's a kind of a handcuff but not really he's going to get work out of the backfield obviously catch balls run the ball and maybe even be the wide receiver three the slot guy on the Browns especially if Jarvis does not start off the season healthy I like Hollywood Brown as well same with Matt Ryan but my pick for this video you guys if you've been watching for a while you also know how much I love this guy it's Mr. Tyler, yeah, Boyd of the Cincinnati Bengals, wide receiver number 33 off the board, set pick numero 79. So Tyler Boyd right now at FFPC is actually going later in the draft, pick 85.2. He is a Cincinnati Bungle round uh, where he got picked in the second round of the NFL draft a couple of years ago, 25 years old, six foot one, 197 pounds. His workout metrics are absolutely atrocious, but that does not seem to really matter for Tyler Boyd. Sometimes the workout metrics show that this guy is an absolutely bag of dicks. He's just a dirt player, but in reality, he's actually very good. And then other guys will say they're some freak athlete. They're amazing. And in reality, they're just garbage because the workout metrics don't tell the tale of how you actually play once the ball is in your hand. 37th percentile, 40-yard dash with a 4.58, 34th percentile speed score, 30th percentile burst score, 48th percentile agility score, and a 39th percentile catch radius. So Tyler, yeah, Boyd finished last year as wide receiver number 18, playing in all 16 games, 13.9 PPR points per game, ranking 27th at the wide receiver position. To further understand that, wide receiver number 18 last year, coming off the board is wide receiver number 33. And even if he didn't play all 16 games, he still would have ranked above that because he had 27, or he had 13.9 PPR points per game, which is the 27th ranked at wide receiver. So I think they're kind of really sleeping on my man, Tyler Yeah Boyd. 147 targets, 9.2 per game, 7th at wide receiver. 90 receptions, 5.6 per game, 8th at wide receiver. Now I know there's going to be the haters thinking, Nick, how the actual fuck do you think Tyler Boyd's gonna get that many targets again now it's Joe Burrow not Andy Dalton well last year it was Andy Dalton and then Andy Dalton got benched on his birthday they said happy birthday Andy Dalton you can go ahead and ride the goddamn pine and we're gonna go ahead and play Ryan Finley so Ryan Finley played a couple games and Tyler Boyd dominated in both scenarios 1045 receiving yards which I think will go up if we see the same amount of immense targets going Tyler Boyd's way 65.3 per game ranked 22nd at wide receiver he had seven total red zone receptions ranking 25th at wide receiver five total touchdown 37th at wide receiver and 24.9 percent target share in that offense 23rd at wide receiver now that number may actually go down since AJ Green is going to be playing with him but to prove the fact that since AJ Green's actually he signed the franchise thing so he's going to actually play but the stats will actually tell you he's better with AJ Green on the field because men lie women lie but stats do not lie and neither do I so in split is nine games with Mr. A.J. Green on the field with, when Tyler Boyd is playing, and the out of split is 21 when A.J. Green isn't playing because A.J. Green's never fucking playing because the guy's always hurt. He's complaining. Oh, my pussy hurts. I'm out. This, that, the other thing. The guy's as he's charm and ultra soft. So in the nine games that A.J. Green played, he had a half PPR points average of 14.39 or half PPR points per game versus 
versus 11.21 without A.J. Green. So obviously better there with A.J. Green. 17.44 point PPR points per game with A.J. Green versus 13.85 without. The target number was similar with 8.22 without A.J. Green or with A.J. Green versus 8.62 without. The reception total was better though with when A.J. Green was on the field. 6.11 per game versus 5.29. The touchdown total was up when A.J. Green was healthy from 0.56 to 0.33 as well as the yard 79.67 versus 64.57 without AJ Green. So don't fret drafting Tyler Boyd. Tyler Boyd is a steal in this round. I'd happily even draft him around above this just to secure the guy who I think has top 15 wide receiver potential. I got him ranked as inside the top 20. So I really do believe in Tyler Boyd this season. I think the Cincinnati Bengals team will be firing on all cylinders with Zach Taylor and Mr. Joseph Burrow. So next round here, obviously round numero eight. If you guys have enjoyed this video thus far, please make sure to click that subscribe button down below. It's free, like I said, and I produce content every single day to really help you guys win. I hope you guys really have been enjoying these videos because I put a lot of hard work into these videos. So uh, starting off the eighth round, we see Julian Edelman Jules, uh, Mr. Squirrel Man is what they call him, I believe, in New England. 85th pick overall, Julian Edelman. 86 is Will Fuller. 87 is Marlon Mack, followed by Carson Wentz, Austin Hoopa from three. Bang! And at 90, <laughs> that was so stupid. And 90, we have Brandon Cooks. Uh, 91, we have Gronk Spike. 92, we have Carrion Johnson. 93, we have Thomas Brady, Tampa Bay Tom, followed by his teammate, Ronaldo Jones, and then John Brown, and then Matthew Burita. There's actually a couple of picks I like here. Julian Edelman, a very super duper safe pick. Uh, Brandon Cooks is a guy that I like with some upside. Same thing goes with Will Fuller. But to me, the pick is a no-brainer here. Besides, actually, Tampa Bay Tom, who I kind of like in the 8th round, but I typically like to wait till like the ninth or 10th round to pick a quarterback. But it's the guy right below number 94, Tampa Bay Tom's teammate, Ronaldo Jones, running back number 35 off the board, pick number 94. So, Ronald Jones, obviously a Tampa Bay Buccaneer, 23 years old, out of USC, 5 foot 11, 205 pounds, 70th percentile, 40-yard dash with a 4.53, 52nd percentile speed score, 52nd percentile burst score, and a 5.9 college yards per carry, ranking 69th. Very nice. So looking at Ronald Jones right now, like I said, coming off the board as running back number 35, pick number 94. Last year finished above that at running back number 25 in 2019, playing in all 16 games. So I know there's going to be the notion that Keyshawn Vaughn, he's sneaking up in there. They draft him. He looks like a good pass catching back. Looks like a good running back overall for the team. But with there being no preseason games, probably seem like there's going to be no preseason games, that really hurts the rookie running backs and that elevates the guy who's already there. So I think Ronald Jones is even more of a steal now, especially since I think they're going to be scoring a whole shit ton and Ronald Jones will be in for a lot of those goal line touches. 10.4 PPR points per game, ranking 35th at the running back position, 172 carries, 10.8 per game, ranked 23 at running back, 724 rushing guards, 26 at running back, 41 targets, and 31 receptions. None of those really ranked high at all, not known to be some super of a, type of a super pass catching back, but obviously does have competent hands because he caught 31 receptions. We know Tom Brady loves to dump the ball off to the running back, and if Keyshawn Vaughn isn't getting as much work, Ronald Jones could really be the benefactor of that. 309 receiving yards, 20th at running back position. Red zone touches were 21-39, and total touchdowns were 6. 26th and they had Peyton Barber last season and they told Peyton Bar Barber to skedaddle and go to Washington so right now the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have the 13th ranked offensive line via Pro Football Focus a very accurate website based on the ranking of the offensive line so they do have a very good offensive line and the article I read talking about their offensive line they say they have top 10 potential so they could be one of the top 10 best offensive lines in the league and I understand people are going to be concerned that the Tampa Bay offense is going to be very, very pass-heavy. And while I agree they're going to be pass-heavy, Ronald Jones will still be getting that work, potentially going to be jamming them in on the goal line. And it's just going to be scoring overall. If the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are scoring and they actually just aren't having Jameis, since Jameis isn't the quarterback, throw the game away from them. Where Because at the beginning of every game, Jameis does this thing. He rolls the dice. He throws it. And he rolls whatever it is that, that says interception. It's like a six-sided die. And five out of six of the dice say, throw an interception James Winston and he just does it every single fucking time without fail 
That's what I think we're going to see, out of J- not out of Jameis Winston, because he's obviously in New Orleans, so we're not going to be seeing that. We're going to be seeing a team where on the first drive of the game, they don't throw a pick, and the other team instantly gets the ball back, and the game's like 14-0 before you can even blink once because Jameis just throws the game away. I love Jameis Winston, though. Eat a W. So I think this is obviously going to help out Ronald Jones and the amount of times that they can actually run the ball in 2020. Like I said, they bring in competition with Keyshawn Vaughn, but I'm not super worried, but they did lose Peyton Barber, like I said, 154 rushes and 24 targets in 20. 19 those are going to be vacated I think Ronald Jones is going to get a decent amount of those this season now on to the final round of the video the final part of the video like I said if you guys have enjoyed please make sure to click that subscribe button starting off the ninth round with Jordan Howard big man Jordan Howard followed by James White Philip Lindsay Darius Slayton 49ers defense Marvin Jones uh Darrell Henderson Keyshawn Vaughn Christian Kirk Matthew Stafford J.K. Dobbins Emmanuel Sanders interesting to note Keyshawn Vaughn goes one round after Ronald Jones even though I don't see as much work from him so my pick for this round is Marvin Jones, wide receiver of the Detroit Lions, uh, pick 102, wide receiver number 39. Another picks that I like here, there's three in a row. I like Jordan Howard's upside in Miami. Coming off the board is the 37th running back, a guy that has been in a 1,000-yard rusher in the past. And then James White, obviously a very good pass-catching running back who's going to skyrocket up the board. I think round 9 is very wrong ADP for him because he's going in the like the 6th round of most drafts, 7th round, so I wouldn't even be able to pick him here since I feel like that's kind of a fraudulent pick. Philip Lindsay as well. I think Melvin Gordon may actually not be as workhorse of a back as we thought he could be, but Marvin Jones is my pick of the Detroit Lions. Marvin Jones, Detroit Lion, like I said, FFPC 110 so he's going even later than this on FFPC. Six foot two, 200 pounds, a fifth round pick, 30 years old, but that does not seem to matter for Marvin Jones because this guy's a goddamn beast. 77th percentile, 40 yard dash with a 4.46, 102.5 speed score ranking 76 or 76 percentile, 9th percentile burst score, 84th percentile agility score, 75th percentile catch radius for Mr. Marvin Stavin Jones. So Marvin Jones right now coming off the board, like I said, wide receiver 39, pick 102, finished this year, last year's wide receiver number 28 playing in just 13 games over that stretch 14.9 PPR points per game 19th at the wide receiver position now Marvin Jones is a guy who's never going to play a healthy season this guy will probably miss three four games every single year but there's still value in that because when the guy's healthy he's got the 1a 1b scenario to me with Kenny Galladay while I'd much rather have Kenny Galladay Marvin Jones is not a bad afterthought prize in the later rounds of your draft 92 total targets last season with 7.1 per game ranking 37th at wide receiver but obviously this is in 13 games so he was getting a whole lot of volume in the games though 62 receptions 4.8 per game ranking 32nd at wide receiver 7 179 receiving yards, 59.9 per game, 36th at wide receiver, 11 red zone receptions, 9th at wide receiver, 9 total touchdowns, 3rd at wide receiver, and a 20.2% target share in that Lions offense, 39th at wide receiver. Interesting to note also, some of these games are without Matthew Stafford starting at the quarterback position. So to look at the other interesting stats here, is with Matthew Stafford versus without. So in split is with Matthew Stafford the first eight games of the season, and the final five he played were with David Blau. Very interesting also to note that last season, Matt Ryan was playing the best football Matthew Ryan has ever played in his NFL career. That was the best Matt Ryan we have ever seen. He could have been the MVP of the league had he not have strained his back from carrying that Detroit Lions organization for as long as that guy has been at the helm of the quarterback position over there in Detroit. Also very interesting to note is Detroit is one of the least run-heavy teams in the NFL, so they really do like to air the ball out there in Detroit. He had played eight games with Matthew Stafford, like I said, versus five without. So in the eight games with Mr. Matthew Stafford, he had 13.86 half PPR points per game versus 10.4 without, 16.49 PPR points per game versus 12.4 without. So while there's only like three or four points, that's obviously very notable considering it is scoring more fucking points. And four points, three points can win you your whole entire matchup. Now, why was this? Due to the uptick of catchable pass passes obviously he still had a similar amount of targets 7.12 per game versus seven but the target or the reception total was obviously higher due to the fact that the ball being thrown to him is easier to catch coming from Matty Snapback's hands with 5.25 with Matty Snapback versus four without Matty Snapback which is obviously a one increase getting you an extra point or half of a point in half PPR versus PPR leagues his touchdown total went up with Matt Stafford 0.75 per game versus 0.6 without and his yardage number obviously went up as well due to the fact that the targets were much better for him and he was able to get more reception. 66.88 per game versus 48.8 per game without Matthew Stafford. Overall, I think Matthew Stafford is a very, very, very big steal at his price right now in 2020. Not Matthew Stafford, I should say. Marvin Jones is a big steal 
as is Matt Stafford, because uh, he might be in one of his other videos because he goes way too late. But Marvin Jones is a big steal. This guy is going to play out yet again and ball out in 2020. So I think Marvin Jones is going to be a great pick for the Detroit Lions. Let me know what you guys thought about these picks. If you guys had any picks that were opposite to me, please make sure to leave them down below in the comments because I really like to engage with you guys and talk to you guys in the comments. I love each and every single one of you motherfuckers. Please make sure to click that subscribe button. Make sure to leave a review on the podcast. Maybe I'll read it next episode if you're the most recent one. But I will make sure to read them all. I love each and every single one of you guys, and I'll see you guys tomorrow with yet another banger. Good boy!